Hey, we have here today another integral from the MIT integration, be 2022. This was regular season problem 18. And we kind of have this pretty complicated looking integral on the board with a lot of weird things going on. It's interesting that we put a, um, we have absolute value on there on the X. The other, the other question I have is what is going on with this square root of three? I don't understand. I don't really understand why this square root of three is here. And the thing I want to notice to start is that this is actually an even function. Now you can just notice that by, if you plug in, if you plug a negative number in here for the x squared, that's just going to become positive because of the square. And then on the absolute value, this is the same thing. If you plug like a negative one in here, it's going to become one because of the absolute value, not because of the square, but just because of the absolute value. And that's going to allow me to use this nice property for even functions where I can, with the symmetric bounds from negative one to one, I can write this as an integral from zero to one and just bring a two out front. And then I'm going to do a quick rewrite, but when I do that, but this is going to allow me to drop the absolute value on the X because now the bounds are positive. So we're not going to need that. So I can write this as just one plus X squared. I'm going to distribute this minus sign. I think I'll just change the order. So we'll bring this term over. So we're going to have four minus X squared, and then we'll distribute the minus here. We'll have minus squared of three DX. And then from here, I'm just going to focus on this first integral. So what I'm thinking of is, I'm thinking of breaking this into three integrals and just kind of dealing with these separately, but notice the similarity of this one to this one. And focusing on this first one, I'm gonna do a u substitution to clean this up. I'm just gonna make my u equal to one plus x, and then du will just be dx. So we'll make this substitution here. Now on our bounds, we'll plug a one in here. So our upper bound will become two, we'll plug a zero in, and the lower bound's gonna be one. Then substituting here, this is again just u, so we're gonna have four minus u squared du. Then from here, what I wanna do is just a variable change. This is a definite integral, so I can change the variable to whatever I want. I'm gonna change it back to x, so we're gonna have square root of four minus x squared dx. And the interesting thing about that is we have the exact same integral here and here with just different bounds. And that's gonna motivate me to kind of bring this into it, so we're just gonna deal with these first two integrals. I'm gonna Save this minus square root of three for later, but we'll just focus on this first part. So doing a quick rewrite on just these first two integrals. What I've done is I put a bracket around this so we can have the two that's gonna to distribute to both these, but I wanna focus on these two integrals. Notice again, we've got the same integral here. Sorry, I forgot my dx. So we have the same exact integral here on both these, but with different bounds. When you have a situation like this with like continuous bounds, notice we go from zero to one, one to two. Well, what we can do is we can put that back together in one integral and just create our bounds from zero to two. So I can rewrite this as the integral from zero to two, and we'll just write it four minus x squared dx. Okay, now with the rewrite, we have this part of the integral going from zero to two, and then I've just distributed my two on the square root of three right here. Now I wanna go back and focus on this integral because we can do this integral now. And a trick substitution to work fine on this, but what I wanna notice is we can actually graph this, and let me do that really quick. So we have the graph of this over here to the right, and just notice it's just the top half of a circle. Notice our bounds are from zero to two. So here's our zero, and so what we're looking for is this area right here. We can, we can discard this piece right here. We just want this quadrant of the uh, circle over here. Since we know the area of the circle, we can use our a equals pi r squared formula. The radius is gonna be two, right? So our area of this is gonna be two squared times pi, which is just four pi. But because we just have one quarter of the circle, it's not gonna be the full four pi, it's gonna be a fourth of that, and that's gonna give us just pi. So therefore, this integral from zero to two is just gonna be pi. So we can bring, let's just not forget our two. So this piece is gonna be two pi. We're gonna have our minus two. Integrating square root of three, we can do that real quick. That's just gonna be square root of three x, but we need to evaluate it from zero to one. We plug a zero in here, we get zero. We plug a one in, we get one. So what we're left with for our final solution is just gonna be two pi minus two square root of three. Okay, I thought it was a pretty fun problem. Kind of interesting, good one from MIT. And yeah, the one question I still have is I don't have any idea, why did they put a square root of three in here? I, I don't see, if anyone, if anyone has any idea why there's a square root of three or if there's some way to use that, let me know, I'm curious. Uh, maybe it's just kind of a distraction, I don't know. It seems like the problem my thinking, my thinking is this problem would probably make a little more sense if you just took the square root of three out of there and you just integrated this other stuff, but I don't know. Anyway, we'll stop it there. Thanks everyone for watching. Hope everyone has a great day.